And we are rolling on November 16th, 2017, where some people are talking, where all cameras are away, computers are closed, phones are away, yes, and no one's writing or reading, Brianna, and people are, all eyeballs are on Justin who's going to share with us a personal commitment. I'm Justin. Hi, Justin. Hi, Justin. The sun used to never set in Great Britain. That was the slogan that they used. The empire lasted from uh, the Pacific Ocean to the Atlantic Ocean. There was never a continent where Britain did not rule on. And yet, the Americans defeated them in the American Revolutionary War. They broke free one day. General George Washington says, discipline is the soul of an army. Uh, it can make uh, a minuscule army large, and it can make, uh, it can do anything for an army. With discipline, you can do great things, was his point. Today, I want to share with you my personal commitment to self-discipline. I'm going to share with you two reasons why I'm committed to self-discipline, and I'm going to share with you three actions that I've taken for self-discipline. This is significant because without self-discipline, you can do nothing. Uh, there's a common trait among all uh, successful people in the world, and that is they're all driven, and they're all disciplined. Conversely, there's a similar trait among everybody who sits in their mother's basement when they're 40 years old playing video games and pretending to be a foreign policy expert uh, on internet chat for Ooh. Uh, And that is that they have no self-discipline. The first reason I'm self, uh, committed to self-discipline is that I was diagnosed by a psychologist with uh, mild obsessive compulsive disorder. This, shows, this began showing itself in high school when uh, I would uh, spend hours uh, after meeting up with a friend checking to make sure that I hadn't stabbed him with a pocket knife I used to carry to make myself <coughs> cool. Uh, he, uh, I never stabbed him, but I, I had this fear that I might have stabbed him, and that took away uh, from hours of my own resting time, and that took away from hours uh, that I had uh, with him to build a relationship with him. So that damaged both my relationship with him, and that damaged uh, the time that I had to do other things. So that's one reason why I'm committed to self-discipline, because uh, it allows me to build my relationship with other people, and it makes me happier not having to worry about uh, everything uh, uh, that might go wrong with me. The second reason that I'm uh, committed to self-discipline is that I know my father's story about how he was born in the gang areas in Hong Kong and he was born in the slums and uh, he had no way out. Everybody around him either joined a gang or uh, was shot or something and uh, the people who could afford it moved out of the neighborhood but his family didn't have that luxury. How did my dad pull himself out of this mess? He uh, got to work, he disciplined himself, he learned math and he learned science and he learned Chinese. He didn't learn English too well but uh, he disciplined himself for that later. How did he um, and when he came to the uh, United States, he spoke no English, that even a postmaster couldn't understand him. Uh, so uh, what did my dad do? He disciplined himself, he got to work, he went to grad school, he took English courses, um, and he listened to the radio, uh, and he disciplined himself because he knew that the only way that he could support a family in the future was by discipline. This makes me feel happy. Uh, this this reason, uh, self-discipline makes me feel happy because it makes me understand that I can uh, honor my father's legacy, I can honor my father's efforts uh, by accomplishing uh, great things in this life. Three actions that I've taken uh, self-discipline uh, that I want to share with you are, uh, the first one is um, that I have committed to waking up at 6.30 in the morning and no later than that every morning for this quarter especially. Uh, that's something that I've started this quarter, uh, and uh, I have not been, I have not failed in it a single morning this quarter. Uh, this makes me, uh, uh, there's another commitment that, uh, there's another action that I've taken, um, and it has been eating with 
uh, a new person every week uh, and eating with people at least five times a week and um, that uh, uh, because I'm an introvert, that's difficult, and uh, it forces me to discipline myself to uh, set up times and meet those appointments. One final action that I've taken uh, for self-discipline is by eating a bowl of raw spinach every meal uh, that I eat in the dining halls. Um, this, is, uh, this requires a ton of discipline because uh, the spinach is naturally disgusting. <laughs> uh, these actions make me feel um, empowered to do anything that I set my mind to. Um, it's allowed me to uh, uh, make the use of every minute of the day, and it's allowed me to uh, get rid of the uh, obsessive and compulsive thoughts in my mind. Uh, in summary, I've shared with you two reasons why I'm committed to self-discipline, and I've shared with you three actions that I've taken for self-discipline. Um, the, um, uh, uh, there should be no doubt in this room that I am personally committed to self-discipline. Uh, how did the United States beat the uh, British Empire? Uh, George Washington says it's all because of their discipline. Thank you. Time. 526. Rare. Hi, Harris. Um, I think your personal story is really good, and I think your um, I'm trying to say. Okay, your personal story is really good. I like how you connected it to like not only yourself but your family, and I think that your talking was pretty good. You didn't seem nervous at all. Improvement. That's you. That's me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Sam. Hi, Sam. Uh, I felt that, well, you, you spoke well. I thought that the flow could use a little work. There were a few places that you kind of hit a small hitch. And I think with just a little more repetition, you'd be able to kind of enunciate, or not enunciate better, but have a better flow and uh, be more easy to listen to. Good. Justin, I like your speech. I thought it took some courage and there was some self interesting self-revelation in there. It was authentic. You were real about your illness and your discipline and other things, and so that struck me as being authentic. You started with George Washington and his discipline. I would also add some real luck and some real bonehead moves by the British at crucial times, but, you know, I quibble. But you had a good introduction. Um, your thesis preview, good. Uh, your significant statement, you talked about all successful people, and then you started bashing people that were 40 years old living in their mother's basement, trolling on the internet. Uh, pretty, pretty harsh. Don't know how exactly if that was a cautionary tale for Olivia or uh, or you know, whatever, but you know I, I use her as a metaphor. But I'm not sure it really sold, or was that just to scare the bejesus out of people into getting disciplined now, so they won't be living with their parents after graduation? I don't know, uh, Justin. I don't know, but uh, it wasn't a great significant statement to me. Okay. Okay, you uh, mm, alluded to carrying a knife. Yikes, I hope you don't do that anymore. Um, <laughs> but um, that was a real revelation. And uh, it sounds like that was something you had to work through. And I appreciate, I'm not going to go into that. I just appreciate you revealing that. And that was interesting. Uh, your second reason was you had a father as a model who is, you know, immigrants have... Uh, I come from a family of farmers who came over from Germany, who went out to the Midwest, who had were just given a section of land by the government with nothing on it. And the first winter, they just you know they had my my mother and my mother and uh, his uh, the two children, and they built a farm out of it, and it ended up being a gigantic farm. And when they were all said and done. 
but they had fire in their belly. You know, the immigrants want to succeed. They want to do well. You know, they want to. Uh, they uh, they have a certain burning need to succeed and to have self discipline. People that have it too easy sometimes. Uh, you know, they lo they lose some of that fire in the belly. Lose some of that self discipline. And it's, it can be problematic. So your father's story was good, and. Um, you mentioned his English, which he overcame, and that was good by listening to the radio. And you were going to honor his, you know, model, I guess you'd say, yeah. The actions you taken were, I'll just say, all consistent with your PC. I especially admire you sitting with a new person. That takes, for you, some courage. So that's good, and uh, I eat spinach a lot. I love it raw, but uh, I don't find it unpleasant. I find it healthful, healthy and wonderful, and I love the taste, but that's what makes the world go around, isn't it, Justin? Your how you feel, you feel empowered, and that was good. Um, summary conclusion, tie back, um, tie back to the Washington story was good. Can I, you said, and here's what I want to talk to you about, give you some feedback. Move hands from the side. Say you're, you're keeping them really pretty pretty stiff there right now in your side. You're going to relax a little. I'd like to see you um, move up the gestures up around your head and over to the side more because when you watch yourself tonight on YouTube, you'll see that you kind of kept it down here, kind of on the down low. Use filler. Fewer filler words and pauses, and walk around the room smoothly. How did it go? I think I used fewer filler words than Good. last time. Uh, but when I tripped up, like Sam said, uh, yeah. I kind of added some pauses okay. in there. I'd like to see you also work on your eye contact five seconds per person. Thank you. <laughs> Next day. Who's on deck, A? Who's the last A? There's just two A's? Beautiful. Life, life is beautiful. Okay. Yeah, you have to, does someone have a dark coat they can give Iris? You want her sweater? Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I have a sports bra. <laughs> yeah, that's better. Yeah. yeah, you really are white. Look at her. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Looks good on you. <laughs> She's gonna keep it. I know. I left out. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Iris is looking around the room to make sure all eyeball. It. Put that phone away. Ridiculous. What could be more important than this class? I love you, darling. No. <laughs> Texting during class? That's a no-no. Jesus. I told you that multiple times today. You're just not into this class, are you? Okay. All right. Iris, rock and roll. Hi, guys. My name is Iris. Hi, Iris. Please kindly go away. I'm introverting. This is a quote from the book, The Introvert Entrepreneur, by the author Beth Buell. And it might sound funny or sarcastic to some people, but I personally can really relate to it. I consider myself to be an introvert, and I get pretty uncomfortable in large crowds, and I actually like spending my time alone better, but I decided that I need to change, and I should be more social and outgoing. So today I want to share with you my personal commitment of being more social. I will share with you two reasons why I am personally committed to being more social and three actions I have taken to achieve this personal commitment. I know that some people will be able to relate to some of my experiences or maybe 
be even um, encouraged to actually go out of your own comfort zones too. So the first reason why I am personally committed to being more social is because I know that it can make some lasting friendships. Last year, I decided to join a club at UCLA. I went to a couple of the general meetings and stuff, and I did not know anyone there, and there were just groups of people everywhere. And some people saw that I was new, and they came up to me, and they introduced themselves to me, which was really nice. But being an introvert, it was difficult for me to actually go up to the groups first and introduce myself and, you know, like maintain that those like small talks and introductions and stuff. I also attended some of like the events that they had, like bowling or going to the movies. But I mean I have fun at those events, but at the end of the day I just feel so drained and I just want to go home and lie down and not talk to people and I need to like recharge and stuff. So slowly I found myself um, not going to the club meetings more and more, and I stopped talking to the new people that I met there. And because I was not putting in the time and effort to um, get closer with these people, I started to lose the opportunities for some friendships that I could have made. And this made me feel sad because I could see that everyone else was getting super close to each other and they're having fun, but me, I was actually becoming more distant with the people that I've met at the clubs and stuff. So the second reason that I've taken to, or no wait, the second reason that um, I am personally committed to being more social is because of a time when I actually wanted to go out and do something fun, but there was like no one to hit up. And this is this sounds really sad, but it was reality for me because um, as I get busier with school and stuff, I tend to become even more recluse. I like studying by myself, and I don't like stressing out about like other things. So I started to just be more alone as the quarter got busier, and it's not that, like, I love everyone I know, it's just difficult for me sometimes, like, I don't really feel like hanging out, I don't really feel like, you know, keeping the conversations going, like, on text or, like, whatever, so I kind of just start becoming more, like, alone. Um, I realized that I was being such a hermit last quarter when I actually wanted to go out and do something fun because I was done with finals and I was like, okay, finally I can relieve some stress and I can hang out with someone. So I really wanted to do something fun. But when I picked up my phone and I was like looking through my contacts, I realized like, wow, I haven't spoken to like any of these people I know for such a long time that there was not one person in my phone that I could hit up out of nowhere, you know, suddenly and just be like, hey, let's hang out, you know? And this made me feel really isolated, but I knew it was my fault because relationships are not one-sided, and I know, I knew that I also had to be attentive to my friendships also. So I shared with you two reasons why I am personally committed to being more social, and now I'll share with you three actions I've taken to um, put, or be more social. So number one, I try to text my friends a lot and just ask them how they're doing and what's up, you know, because that allows them to know that I'm still here and that I do care and think about them also. And number two, I try to eat lunch or dinner with someone at least once or twice a week, or at least once like a week or two. If I get busy, like maybe like two weeks. But this is a good chance for me to catch up with people and to spend quality time with them. Number three, in my classes, I try not to stay quiet, but I try to talk to a couple people in my classes and try to get to know them better and trying to like be more social in that way. Um, when I perform these three actions, I feel proud of myself that I'm going out of my comfort zone to do these things and it allows me to maintain and create new friendships also. So, in summary, I've shared with you two reasons why I am personally committed to being more social and three actions that I've taken to achieve this personal commitment. There should be no doubt in this room that I am personally committed to being more social. So, please kind of go away. I'm introverting. Like I said, I totally relate to this quote. However, I realize that sometimes it's worth it to go out of your comfort zone and be social and actually appreciate the people that are close to you. Thank, Thank you. you. Like. Hi, I'm Jake. I really like the speech you are 
Quinn, you had all the points well, and you were easy to listen to. Improvement. Hi, Nolan. Hi, Nolan. I, thought, uh, I really like your speech. I just thought sometimes it looked like you were looking away from the crowd. That's it. I like your speech, Iris. Thought it was authentic. Five thirty. Okay. Thought it was authentic. It's difficult. Um, you probably. Um, it was probably difficult for you to um, talk about being so isolated, or you call it a hermit, or I don't know, self-absorbed that you're, you know, alone. You prefer to be alone, and that's your preference, or has been your preference. But you know, uh, it can get old. Uh, there's a strength in being alone. You know, you can come to relationships with a certain power when you are able to be alone. Some people have the exact opposite problem. They can never be alone. They always are on Facebook or dialing up and counting their likes and friends and other crap like that. And it's equally sick. Um, like your introduction from the introverted entrepreneur. <laughs> Please go away. I'm introverting. Yeah, I, okay. I guess that's a good tie back. Yeah, so that worked. And um, I was, uh, I, uh, you, you uh, got me to buy into your two reasons, so I bought them. And I thought you were very authentic with them, and that was good. And I especially uh, uh, got it when you said, you know, I guess, oh, okay, now I'm going to go out to lunch with somebody. And you went, oh, oh no one's there. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> I have no friends. Whoops. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that was a good moment in your speech. So that was, uh, that was real. Um, so now you text and you uh, keep up. Friendships, and you know, you, you don't have to have a lot; just a, a few quality ones, you know, are you know, good. Um, and I would say, I see you talking in class, and not just talk to classmates in class, but speak, raise your hand, and ask questions in class, and in discussion sections, talk too. That will help you overcome some of this too, because you know you're not a stupid person. So you know, some people. Feel oh I'm I'm too dumb to say anything. I want people to laugh at something I'd say that would be stupid. But you're not stupid, so right? You know, so you can say things in in discussion and in class that are smart and intelligent. Be part of a discussion. Uh, you're connived. Be more confident. Three to five seconds of eye contact. Return to the power stance. How'd it go? Um, I was speaking it. I try to fake it, like my confidence, uh -huh. and I yeah. think it kind of worked. And <laughs> yeah. Good. Um, three to five seconds, I'm not really sure about that. Yeah. Honestly, when I'm standing up here, it's hard yeah. to really think about who you're looking at and like yeah, what okay. you're doing right now. I mean, I think I looked around, but I'm not sure if it was like three to five seconds. No, I don't think it was. So I, I'd like to see you work on that. And uh, the power stance, you got into it when you moved, so it was good. So it was a good job. Uh, I would say just a little more uh, emphatic style of delivery and a little more energy from your oompa, from your delivery. It would be good. Thank you. Okay, our work is done. Return.